Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today with another episode of the Random Car Challenge. After taking down Sabrina in Saffron, we've made our way to Fuchsia City to take on Koga. I've stopped filming adding the cards to the deck, but before facing the poison type gym leader, we added all of the cards of Pokemon available by surfing and that's about it. We need to draw a team of four to take on the poisonous ninja master and I have faith that we won't draw another Bellsprout. Eh, I mean the numbers suggest we won't. Okay, instead we'll be using Nidorino, Venonat, nice, really going all out on the poison, Tauros, and Meowth. This isn't exactly ideal, but I think we'll be okay. Let's have a look at the team. Up first, at level 39, we've got Venonat with Psybeam, Supersonic, Sleep Powder, and Poison Powder. At level 37, with Strength, Swagger, Rest, and Hyper Beam, we've got Tauros. Our second level 37 is Nidorino, and he's got the moves Strength, Horn Attack, Poison Sting, and Double Kick. And our final team member is Meowth, and at level 43, his moveset consists of Slash, Screech, Faint Attack, and Payday. I think this is doable, let's give it a try. Koga leads off with the first of his two coughings, and we start out with Venonat. She pretty quickly takes care of her opponent with a couple of side beams without taking any damage, and Muck is up next. After putting the Sludge Ball to sleep, we recall Venonat and send in Tauros. A couple of hits from strength leave Muck with a sliver of health, but he wakes up and Koga heals him right back up with a Hyper Potion. When he badly poisons the Wild Bull with Toxic, we send Venonat back in and put Muck back to sleep with Sleep Powder. Three consecutive side beams connect to awaken the pile of shape plus sewage, but its retaliatory sludge attack isn't very effective. Another side beam leaves Muck in red health once again, and once again Koga splashes the cash and throws a hyper potion into the mix. Compound Eyes comes into play yet again and helps Venonat land another sleep powder in spite of all of Muck's minimizing. This time he doesn't wake up. Four more super effective hits knock him out and take Koga down to two. Coughing number two is sent out and we put him straight to sleep. A full heal wakes him up, just in time to witness his demise. Venonat scores another knockout with Psybeam and leaves Koga with just his ace. Weezing gets the same treatment as everyone else. Sleep Powder puts him out for the night, and as we want to use our whole team, we bring in Meowth. After lowering Weezing's defense as much as possible with Screech, the poison type wakes up and one-shots Meowth with a critical hit sludge. We send out our last team member in Nidorino, and with his defense as low as possible, two shattering strength attacks knock out Koga's ace and give us the win. Now, we didn't actually win the Soul Badge at the first time of asking. For the first time in the series, we actually lost a battle on our first try. There have been a lot of lucky battles, but this one was the complete opposite. In this attempt, we somehow managed to miss Sleep Powder six times in a row. Now, you can see Muck using Minimize and Sleep Powder isn't the most accurate move, so maybe it wasn't so unlikely. But you're forgetting about Compound Eyes. Or maybe you weren't. I don't know, I'm not you. I was so confused by this series of events that I had to go and check the Venonat's ability was in fact Compound Eyes. Let's just take a real look at this for a second. Sleep Powder has 75% accuracy, so a regular Pokemon using it should theoretically be connecting 3 times out of 4. The ability Compound Eyes gives you a 1.3 times multiplier on your accuracy, making Venonat's chance of hitting Sleep Powder 97.5% on any given day. Now we have to think about Minimize. At the time of the first attempt, Muck had raised his evasion one stage. That gives us a 075 times multiplier, taking the accuracy of the first Sleep Powder down to 73.125%. That's not great, but it's still almost three times more likely to hit than it is to miss. Anyway, he used to minimize again before our second shot, changing that 0.75 multiplier down to a 0.6 and dropping our accuracy to 58.5%. Pretty inaccurate, but still more likely to hit than miss. Muck raises evasion once more before our third shot, dropping our chance of hitting down to 48.75%. That held for attempts 4 and 5, because he didn't use Minimize again until our fifth consecutive miss. That final Minimize lowered our chance of hitting Sleep Powder to 41.73%. Pretty poor accuracy, and after that sixth miss, Venonat finally managed to put Muck to sleep. Individually, the misses aren't that extreme, but the odds of all of them missing was 0.87%. That is pretty ridiculously unlikely, and I just realized I spent way too long talking about this. Sorry. Let's move on. After taking down Koga, it's time to head to Cinnabar Island and go after Blaine. Before we can take him on, we have some business to take care of in the Pokemon Mansion, but once we're done there, it's time to draw our team. The only cards to add before this one come from the building we just visited, so let's get into it and select another team of four. Starting off with a Pokemon who's quad weak to fire probably isn't ideal. Along with Parasect, we're going to be using Grimer, that's a new one, Persian, and Poliwag. 
I hope you all appreciate this world-class cinematography. Now, you may have seen this already because I put it up on here, but while grinding up Poliwag in the Pokemon Tower, we encountered a shiny Ghastly. The Pokemon Tower is the ideal place to grind up if you want special attack EVs, and I have no idea how many Ghastlies I'd battled at this point, but that's two shinies for the series and I am definitely not complaining. I think the game felt bad about the sleep powder thing, honestly. After catching her, we finished grinding and returned to Cinnabar Island. Here's what our team looks like for the battle with Blaine. Painfully enough, Persian had to be level 42, which meant the level 43 Meowth we just used against Koga was absolutely no use. I did a lot of Meowth grinding for this video, some would say too much Meowth grinding. Me, I would say that. Okay, let's go get our 7th gym badge. Blaine sends in his Growlithe first, and we start with Parasect. I was sort of just hoping to shock Blaine into forfeiting, I assumed that nobody had ever used one against him before and he'd probably just call it quits. That doesn't happen unfortunately, but Growlithe does miss Fire Blast, allowing us to put him to sleep with Spore. We send in Poliwag who lands a crit surf to one-shot the fire type. Ponyta comes out next for the Cinnabar gym leader and we recall Poliwag and send in Grimer. Although he manages to land a sludge and deal some damage, the horse gets the better of him with a trio of fire blasts. We send in Parasect for backup and wow, that is bad backup. One fire blast is more than enough to take out the parasitic mushroom and leave us with just two. We send Persian in, and he digs underground, avoiding Ponyta's Fire Blast. When he comes back above ground, the collision with Ponyta knocks him out and takes it down to a 2 on 2. Blaine sends in Rapidash, and we go for the same strategy that worked against his unevolved form. Two digs knock out the Fire Horse and leave Blaine with just his Arcanine. Persian welcomes the Fire type into battle with a Hyper Beam, but two Fire Blasts take him down while he's recharging. Poliwag comes in for the final one-on-one -on -one of the battle, and a single Hydro Pump washes away Arcanine and gives us the win. With the Volcano Badge in our case, we're only one gym battle away from reaching the Elite Four. That'll be our goal for the next episode, though. We've picked up another two gym badges today, and that's the most progress we've made in one of these videos, so that's something to celebrate. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>